Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us here today. My name is Shane Snipes. I'm actually coming to you live here from the Borough Manhattan Community College, part of the CUNY system here in New York City. And I have some special guests with me today, entrepreneurs, instructors, facilitators, people who are in the entrepreneur ecosystem here in New York City. We're gonna be talking about the state of entrepreneurship and the address that Kaufman Foundation just gave today uh, as it relates to sort of a national view of what entrepreneurship looks like. So we're gonna go local uh, here in New York City and we're gonna talk about some of the things that relate to what it's like here versus some of the uh, discussion points that they had uh, and ways that we can complement uh, those discussions. Today, I just, I'm gonna jump right into it because I don't have a lot of time with these people. Uh, we're able to pull this webcast together uh, with some great experts here. So I really wanna spend the time talking with them as much as possible. Uh, Glenford Patterson uh, was able to join me today and he has a background in entrepreneurship, specifically in Uptown or the upper part of New York City. And uh, in that borough and in that realm, he's worked in the tech space for many years. Uh, he's also taught uh, entrepreneurship at the college level after also running companies that had to do with startup finance. So thanks so much for joining me here today, Glenford. Thank you, thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. And Janice, it's so good to see you again. Mm -hmm. so Janice Gassum is another one of my guests today. She is uh, an advisor here at BMCC, so she brings a lot of insight when it comes to diversity and, and inclusion. So I want us to talk about that issue quite a bit when it comes to entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial ecosystem here in New York City. And we'll be having that kind of discussion around those issues too and some of the main points that Kaufman brought forward today. So. Thanks so much for joining me today. Yes, very happy to be here. All right, so let's dive right straight into it. Um, one of the things that I'm gonna play for us uh, as we go over these things, uh, and it's just like a screenshot of what the, the folks were um, presenting and the way that they kind of encapsulated this discussion oh. about entrepreneurship came about uh, in a pretty interesting way. Uh, as I share my screen here, you're gonna notice something that there's a video that's gonna play and it's gonna get quite large here in a minute. Um, I'm not gonna play the audio, but what I do want us to discuss when it comes to talking about this state of entrepreneurship, first off, they're using the hashtag zero barriers. Um, and now the woman's voice who's on this is, is great. I really like it. I'm gonna play it just for a split second. Woman well, is the upside down of boring. Uncommon is the opposite of unexamined. Uncommon is well, uncommon. But what does it take to trip up the typical? Refuse the usual, confuse conventional. How do you be uncommon? All right, so that's the context that they're putting forward now. At the very start of this State of the Entrepreneurship Address, they're diving into it with this concept that uncommon is really important and that we have to figure out for ourselves what that means. Um, but then they talk about coming together with these diagrams. And what else I noticed? This is like a spoken word piece, which is a totally different way of thinking about what people originally thought of as entrepreneurship, right? Originally, people were thinking about this concept of like entrepreneurship and being structured and business focused. But now Kaufman is going into this place of like openness and inclusiveness and even the way that they're dialoguing about it is coming, uh, is coming across with that tone. What do you think that means? Um, I, I'll go uh, first. I, I think uncommonness is really approaching entrepreneurship with authenticity. Um, I, I think that it's great when you are focused on making money because obviously that's the purpose of a business. Um, but I think that a lot of businesses really focus on just the capitalism piece and they are inauthentic or they do things at, that are surface level. And I'm, I guess a good example of that is diversity and inclusion efforts um, can a lot of times be very surface level. And I think that that's common, but what's uncommon is doing things uh, from a place of authenticity and doing things because you truly see and recognize the value in it. So I think that that's really important for entrepreneurs and people who are starting their business to be authentic in everything that they do. And what do you think that really looks like here in New York City when it comes to that diversity and inclusion and authenticity? Mm -hmm. uh, is that there? I think it's important to 
talk the talk and walk the walk. Um, if you have a diverse uh, people in your advertising or in your promotions, for example, if it's a university and you take the five most diverse students, put them in an ad, and then when diverse students get to uh, the school, they see that there there's a, a disconnect between uh, their perception and reality. I think that going back, that's inauthentic. So it's really about talking the talk and walking the walk. If you say you care about these things, you need to be uh, taking action and doing specific things, instituting diversity trainings, um, making sure that you have affinity groups or employee resource groups for different uh, types of people. Um, so doing having actions that demonstrate you care about these things is important because it's easy to say, oh, I'm passionate about this without um, being able to really demonstrate that. Yeah. Um, and Glenford, I want to dive in a little bit with you. You know, you've worked in the uptown area, as we call it in New York City, uh, for many years, and you've seen the way that things happen there in conjunction with diversity, but also in conjunction with access to resources and other materials. Uh, how do you think that really plays out here in New York City? Yeah. Janice, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that because um, to be, to, it's, it's, I think it's really unique that uh, we are coming from the perspective of, um, from diversity because that's not my, my, my background. So I like what you said in terms of how do you make it authentic? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I really like that. And I think that's the challenge New York has to face, face with. How do they make it authentic? Mm -hmm. uh, be, uh, be, because entrepreneurship in its essence and how it developed in New York primarily um, as basically built from uh, white Caucasian males, mm -hmm. um, basically, unfortunately. So now we're thinking about how do we make this authentic? And you can see the, the city struggling with that concept, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. They're an initiative, like they just came up with this initiative that they're going to uh, basically co-coordinate, co-collaborate with um, minority groups on a venture program mm -hmm. where they're in a program, they actually put in, um, a, a one to two program, they're putting in 10 million and then other groups come in and put in 20 million. When you look at basically the other groups, there were females, but there were no minority based company that we can speak of mm -hmm. that they took in, 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 this, in, in this process to so say, okay, fine, if we really want to attract, like you just said, if you really want to attract uh, minority founders to the program, would you have one or two uh, VCs that are basically minority? Build, you know, like Harlem, Harlem Capital Partners, right? Mm -hmm. For example, just for example. So, so I think that you're absolutely right around that. And I'm, I'm happy the way you, you, you thought of it because I, I, I eloquently couldn't put it that way um, in terms of how do we think about, understand, and, 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 I, and, and the Kaufman Foundation is, re, uh, that was a powerful statement that they made today in terms of this mm -hmm. uncommon concept because founders, by the very nature, are really uncommon people. Mm -hmm. When you decide to go out and build something, you, you, you're, you're practically way outside the box because it's not mm -hmm. normal. Normal for you is to get a nine to five job, mm -hmm. right? So it's being uncommon. So I think that's a powerful statement that you're making, being uncommon. And I, and I, and I think you're right. Sometimes we, we focus on, and, and, and even the city, uh, New York City, they focus a lot on what is the return on investment for them, as opposed to broadening it out and say what is it, what is what is the return on their entire stakeholder, mm -hmm. right? which is not necessarily just below 86th Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and I I just want to jump in here to say a couple of things uh, and to to make sure that when we're talking about this now for New York City, we're talking about an ecosystem, right? We're mm -hmm. talking about. Uh, a system that's supposed to support business people who want to start companies. Uh, and that's really what Kaufman has honed in on and said that it wants to build relative to the things that it types, uh, ways that it, t it puts things out there. But this time it did something really interesting uh, this year. And that is, it basically said it's up to us individually to support entrepreneurs we may not be the entrepreneur, but it's up to us to support these people who are basically building the fabric of community in these neighborhoods, in these small towns, and in these places. Uh, and I, that's just, for me, another way to think about how do we get beyond 
this, someone else is going to start a company. Someone else is going to do this. Someone else is going to facilitate that. Um, what do you guys think about that push? Because that was a huge message from their end. Mm -hmm. I think that now more than ever, there is a recognition that it's important for for people if they see a need to just build it themselves um, because I feel like I hate to keep going back to this, but um, I, I feel like diversity and inclusion is, is wrapped up in everything. And I feel like with several different companies, for example, that have been in the news recently, um, there has been this recognition that, hey, if I don't like the way that a company is conducting its business, if I don't like the advertising, if I feel like there is um, inflammatory, uh, you know, there's something inflammatory in their promotions, I need to, rather than complaining or saying I'm going to boycott, I need to start something of my own or support others who started something of their own. So I think that now more than ever, there's this recognition about the importance of entrepreneurship and supporting entrepreneurs. I think that one of the challenges is that people are just drawn to what they're more um, familiar with and what's more popular. So you may know of 10 different entrepreneurs and people who ha make their own lemonade, but you're you're, you're more likely to go to the store and buy Minute Maid because it's something that's recognizable and that you know. So I think that that's one of the, one of the biggest challenges is, is really figuring out how entrepreneurs can connect. Well, with let's, that. let's talk about that for a second then. Let's really talk about what would that look like for us here in New York City to make that kind of shift? How, how would we do it differently than say some of the things or even coming up with the ideas of what that might look like here? Glenford, I know... One of the one of the ways that um, successful people in entrepreneurship happen is because they have a mentor, right? They have that one on one relationship. They have some kind of connection. Uh, are we good at that in New York City? Or are we just basically numb? I, I think I think we're there. We've gotten much better. I think we've gotten much better. What scares me the most, and that's a good point you're making in terms of supporting and billing. I think what scares me the most is. Most of the people who are coming up with this idea of becoming VCs, minorities, they're replicating what happened in San Francisco, even though they're speaking out against it. But they're becoming the same individuals. Mm -hmm. They're not open. There's no access for them. So a minority founders can't get access to a minority VC because they create the same firewall, you know, the same entry to barrier to them. So I think they, they have to recognize that as well. And, and, and Janice is right. They, they, they're, they basically, to use the Minute Maid uh, orange juice lemonade stand mm -hmm. concept, they're billing, they, they, they know what a lemonade look like. They're, um, mm -hmm. they're billing their own, but yet they want it to look like the Minute Maid. So they're replicating San Francisco, even though we want to be different in New York and we pride ourselves on being different. You saw the statistics that came out that New York has become the leading place for tech. Mm -hmm. So we are putting that narrative out that we want to be different, but yet on the surface, we look exactly like the San Francisco um, Boys Club that is not inclusive. Uh, so, so even minority founders can't get access to minority VCs because they have now created this disparate entry. So I think you're right about the mentorship. We need that mentorship. We need to make sure. You know, a lot of people don't really understand because people keep asking me, why do you teach at City College? Or, so, and it's really weird to a lot of people because it's not normal. But I think what happens to a lot of uh, minorities that are quite successful, they still don't see themselves as successful. They still, if you, if you take the Maslow hierarchy of need mm -hmm. and you take the Maslow hierarchy of need, they still don't see themselves as the self-actualized in some place. They still, they're still searching for belonging, even though they're quite successful people but they still don't see that they can volunteer them their time. They still don't see, they find it really weird that you volunteer, you know, as a minority, you volunteer your time or you will actually, um, you know, work at BMCC or work at Silicon College. They find it really weird. They still haven't gotten around that and not realizing that, that that is the mentorship. Those are where the people need the most mentorship. And if yeah, you- I let me give you um, guys some more information and then we can dialogue around this too, because I want us, you know, we, we don't have a lot of time together. So I really want us to get into a, a couple of different issues that, that hopefully will draw people in for other conversations and other types of 
of webcasts around this because it's really important for us to think about the fabric of New York City, right? And the way that New York City operates. So one of the things I'm sharing right now, and I'm just gonna put it up there for everyone to see, is this sort of state of entrepreneurship. And this is based on some numbers that Kaufman had put together and some things that they've uh, said. So when you look at these numbers, 83% of entrepreneurs do not, uh, do not have access to business loans or venture capital, just like you mentioned. 65% uh, rely on personal and family savings. And then um, only a tiny fraction use venture capital. So that's a really important thing to remember here in New York City. And we don't have that dialogue a lot inside of our uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. We still kind of put the venture capitalists on the on this pedestal and put them as the people to come and speak in panels and the people that attract other people to come to these types of events. Anytime you put a bunch of VCs in, at an event, you know you're gonna get people to show up, right? Because mm -hmm. I think that's what money means, but it really, that's not what money means relative to entrepreneurship. Um, and I think that's a really important note to make here. The, the other thing I wanted to mention, and this is a stat that was in the video that popped up, is that there was this concept that was brought forward uh, and the number was three in 1,000 people become quote entrepreneurs. So they're the ones that start companies. That's the statistic. Now they broke it down by state. And so it was really interesting. Certain states are more entrepreneurial than others, but let's just say New York City kind of is slightly more, more than average, but one in a thousand in a what? 3.9 million, I don't know, what's our, no, 7 million now, right? Mm -hmm. Are we like seven, eight, almost eight, eight million. million, I think. Yeah. So imagine the number of entrepreneurs in that context, which is why I think our ecosystem has a really great opportunity. What do you think are some of the best ways to combine this diversity conversation with this whole issue of giving access to all those three in a thousand? The other thousand, according to Kaufman, should be the ones supporting and going to and retweeting and writing reviews and doing that type of thing. They're not the entrepreneurs, but there should be a real support mechanism. Um, what do you think it would take to build something like that in New York City? Go ahead. Yeah, if, if mind, so basically, that's a great question because I, I, I did ask myself that question a couple of years ago. When I when I when I did the, uh, I, I created this thing called the Harlem Tech Summit, um, 2017, and I and I did it and and fundamentally my goal for doing it was exactly what you're saying. How do we support the entrepreneurs? Because at the end of the day, and I think um, my member served me right. Uh, uh, I think Brad Fell said it in one of his book. It's about the entrepreneurs. They come first, basically. It's about the entrepreneurs. So exactly. So this Harlem Tech Summit was to give a voice. To entrepreneurs that was my goal give a voice to entrepreneurs to come in to speak in a place and i was adamant that i wanted this to be in, in in harlem so i kept it in harlem and i could have kept it anywhere in new york quite frankly but i kept it in harlem and the goal was not to outsource this the goal was not i didn't do it the following year and most people keep asking me why is it that you haven't done it again and i never, never said why but the reason why there was no support there, there was basically no support for doing it and then logistically I couldn't find a place to do it. I actually went to the Apollo and they were, they were quite, I, I don't know the word, reticent. They didn't understand what to do in terms of a tech conference. So, you know, so, so we need a whole community to kind of get around uh, basically how do we support this concept? So you're right. It yeah, and I, I'm going to jump in there, Glenford, because I think you paused there for a second. may have been a little no. bandwidth. Yes, it's okay. Um, you know, one of the things that you mentioned right there that I do like is that you said there wasn't support. And this is an interesting, it, oftentimes it's about timing, right? Um, we have we have a lot of interest and passion behind something, but if the time, if the ball hasn't moved in the right direction far enough to get people excited about Harlem in that aspect, it might take another few years for it to actually go on. Um, and that's something that I uncovered with a bunch of my projects. And I would, I, I'd love to hear your perspective of how do you combine this piece, Janice, with this concept of diversity and building a stronger ecosystem that really supports those three out of a thousand? I think what it is is people being willing who are successful to, um, to 
uh, donate some of their time to people who are still coming up because there are very there are a lot of successful um, entrepreneurs who come from diverse backgrounds, but I think that there is a discrepancy in the number of um, entrepreneurs from diverse backgrounds who are giving back and who are mentoring and teaching others. I also think from a standpoint uh, of the aspiring entrepreneur, it's important to put yourself in spaces where these individuals are. So going to as many networking events as possible around this particular space is important. Going to meetup groups, going to, you know, there are lots of paid events, but in New York City, especially more so than probably any other city in the country, there's a lot of free events that are around helping. You know, I just I just saw an event for uh, black female uh, business owners and it's, you know, they have these free events in Brooklyn and in different parts of the city. I just shared that. I shared that. Oh. All my students, I sent it around. It was yeah. All yeah, that's exactly. So like those, there are lots of free events. And I think that sometimes when I go to those events, there's not an, a lot of people there. So I wonder, do these people not know? Is it just that they're not coming? So I think that on both sides for entrepreneurs, it's a matter of um, giving some of your time to events where you're helping other people. But also there is this you know, that you should be going out as an entrepreneur to network with other entrepreneurs. And I think with entrepreneurs, there may be this sense of like, um, I don't want to give out what I know because maybe this person is going to be more successful than me. So I think sometimes there's, there's those fears with entrepreneurs, especially if it's in the same business. It's kind of like this mindset where this competition mindset where it's not like I'm going to help build somebody up. It's like, I can't build other people up because they may take my business or be my competition. So I think it's a matter of the mindset sort of, sort of shifting. And I think that that's happening because of what, what we're seeing with the larger companies and how there are all these issues and people want to boycott. And then it's like, oh, wow, we don't have enough um, Black uh, clothing makers. We don't have enough of this and that. And so why don't I start this? So I think that that recognition is coming about, even though it's a little bit slow. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'll just add to what you're saying there too. Um, and then we'll we'll go on to this concept that I feel like one of the reasons why people oftentimes get wrapped up in what this looks like is, and this is sort of really neat actually. If you look at what Kaufman did on this other part of that handout aside from the statistics, is they actually laid out and there's probably, I don't know, there's probably 18 different ways that you can help here. Um, maybe even more, maybe 20 or so. So there's these little things that seem like not much. Like one of the items that shows up here is taking someone to visit a business that you love. That seems like a really basic thing, but if you actually look at it in relationship to something that a group of people promotes or a specific organization or a specific meetup actually says to their members as part of an announcement, these types of things can really change. So this is where, according to what you can do for the other 997 folks that aren't out there running the business, these are ways for them to be involved in this ecosystem. So I love that Kaufman has flipped this concept that in order to be an entrepreneur, you've got to start a business. In order to be, to, in order to support the entrepreneurial ecosystem, I have to be a business owner, right? There are all these other ways that you can be involved. Um, as you guys saw that list, I don't know if you're able to take a look at it beforehand. Did any one of them stand out for you? Because I have a couple more that I really wanted to, to hone in on as something that, that seems like a great, simple thing for people to do. It was so yeah, I love the posting about it because I try to do that. Um, but I think that I just recently realized the value of word of mouth. And as we all know, word of mouth is the most powerful form of advertising. And I actually, um, when I see people posting about other of minority owned businesses, I go out of my way to support them. Um, so I think that that is something so easy, something as, right. as simple as even liking or commenting or sharing with your audience. And we all have the platform, you know, Absolutely. in some way or another, if you don't have any social media, it's telling people and saying, hey, I went to this, you know, 
black vegan, a black owned vegan restaurant. And it was amazing. You know, I went to this place, I went to that. So I think that each of us have the power, even though we may not think we have that power, or we might say, I don't have a platform that's big enough. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I, and I and I think Shane, one of the concepts is that and we know that, that, that the community as startup, even though we're talking about diversity, it's more inclusion. Because mm -hmm. I, I've known you for probably about two years now. And every time the opportunity comes up for you to sponsor or support entrepreneurship, you do. It doesn't matter what color. And I think there are a lot of successful white entrepreneurs in New York City that feels the same way, but somehow they're not sure if they should do it. But probably you can explain to them that they should do it. It's okay to support and sponsor all entrepreneurs because they 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 can. So I think they, you know, so we so we are so there's not an exclusion thing to just oh how do we do this? It's more an inclusion thing and, and a support for the entire ecosystem because I think it's good for the community. It's good for New York to have a lot more entrepreneurs in the place for from different standpoint, mm -hmm. social, economically, politically, all different things. So I think I, I think you know we the, that, that discussion can be broadened and, and and people can be comfortable to. Um, I, I think one of the one of the unique things for me, and I just want to mention this point. Um, a couple years ago, when I was teaching entrepreneurship, I, I, I met um, Fred Wilson came to our conference to speak. Um, in the Harlem Tech Summit. And it was so powerful because a lot of people felt that, you know, he, 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 he was a part of the community. And I, and I think people have to recognize that. And um, for us to know that, that we can all be a part of this, it's not a black or a white issue. It's not, a, it's, it, it's, we can support the community in doing that. So I think you're absolutely right. And that was one of that. Can you take it to take, take some of the business? Can you, Prefer some of the things like that. It's a simple thing, you know. You don't need to invest in my company. It's fine, right? Um, you know, yeah, just... and, I'm gonna, I, and I'm gonna go even more um, specific to New York City, where because people work in some of the best companies in the world here, because they have access to that type of knowledge, there's a gig and a freelance economy here, unlike anywhere else, right? Because people. Because we have access to so many different types of businesses, so many potential clients, if you start a services type company for PR or, or digital marketing services, or even like a, you know, a car wash service, whatever it is, there's so many ways that we have access to that sort of gig economy level of entrepreneurship. That wasn't really part of what they were talking about today, but I think in New York City, and this is what I've seen at the events, like you mentioned before, in New York City, when I go to something big um, like that, and I know that's your notice to like, hey, you gotta go because I know you have your other thing you have to get to. Yeah, but I have a few minutes. I I, I kind of adjusted for the time, um, okay. just in case. So I have a few minutes. Oh, th thank goodness, thank goodness. I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I when I see this freelancer and gig economy world that exists, it's so huge in New York, but there isn't really a recognition of it. However, when you go to an event, there's so many people in the room and that's what they're actually doing. They're talking about their side business. They're talking about their freelance business. They're talking about quote, their startup, but more likely than not, it's more like a freelancer thing that they're doing. How do you think that plays into this whole New York City ecosystem uh, and maybe makes it a lot different than some of these Midwestern smaller towns? I think that just makes it more imperative that we take advantage of the opportunity. And like you said, I think there's no better, and maybe I'm biased, but I think there's no better place to start a business than here in New York City, because New Yorkers are the toughest critics, but there's also um, the environment in New York City really um, is conducive to growing a business. So I think that taking advantage of the opportunities here are so, so important from both the business owner standpoint to also the, the um, customer standpoint is that you have a plethora of different businesses and entrepreneurs that you can support. So I think that that just makes it even more important and greater responsibility for us to support entre other entrepreneurs, but also to like, we have no excuse if you're an entrepreneur in New York City, because there's so many resources that are available to you and so many things you can go to to connect with other business owners in your particular domain. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. One hundred percent. I agree with that. I, I think. I think. Um, so, so the flip side of that is entrepreneurs, people are looking for, and I keep talking about this in my class with students, um, is getting out there and network. Mm -hmm. Look at the resources. A lot of this is free. Go and talk to people. Go and network with, with people. Share what you're working on and what you can work on and what you want to work on. Uh, so, so, so I agree with you 100%. So, so people who are students who are looking for jobs can take this narrative or just individuals who are looking for jobs can't take this narrative that this is my only way out. Mm -hmm. yeah. This gig well, economy will allow them to create an opportunity for themselves. Yeah, the gig economy can do that. Uh, it's a big initiative that we're pushing uh, here at BMCC to really start supporting and focusing in on that piece of it as a way, as an entry point, to just start down the pathway of an industry or something that you want to start working in uh, as a way to do it. Um, what do you guys see? I want you to kind of flip it around a little bit and say, these are some of the real weaknesses right now that I've noticed in the New York City ecosystem, um, because I want to leave this discussion with people thinking about, wow, maybe I should start to address this challenge that is special to New York uh, in terms of entrepreneurship. Um, whoever wants to go first. Um, Jen, go, go on, Janice, you can go. I've, I've noticed, I, I try to go to a lot of networking events and I've noticed that, um, sometimes the events aren't really, um, you don't feel like it's welcoming or inviting. You know, uh, it, for example, like I've been to events that focus on diversity, but it's like a panel. And then at the end of the panel, everyone rushes up to go talk to the speakers. And if you come into this event without knowing anyone, it's a little bit difficult to network. So I think that um, having events is great, but I think to me, the most important part of an event is being able for everyone to be able to network. So I think that the way that we create events for networking is important um, in any aspect, whether it's at a university or at, at WeWork or at any of these places. So I think that um, it's nice to deliver. Hey, WeWork's not a sponsor. You can't give them. No, just kidding. Oh, right. You're right. Well, I've been to many events there and I feel like some of them are not always um, like it's it's difficult to talk to and meet with people. So I think that you ha have to really be mindful of um, the type of events that you put on. And I think, Shane, you do an excellent job of creating these events where entrepreneurs can speak with students and can interact and students can make those connections, because I feel like that's the most Im important part. One of the most important parts of entrepreneurship is that networking. Great. I agree. I, I, I support that one hundred percent. I think. I think even if we go speak on an event, I think people they should make themselves available to talk to. Mm -hmm. Just try to make themselves available to, to. You know, there are some unique things I experienced, and, and which is one of the things that's lead me back to do a next summit at some point because I, I'm not really a, 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 a summit guy. I can't really do it. I don't think it fit my personality well, but I'm trying, and and I think there was a. Um, Ryan Williams, who started Carsway, he came to the event. And the irony is that our event was pretty much free. It was like 50 bucks, right? The next day or two days later, he was speaking at TechCrunch, which was like $1,000. So basically what he's saying is, I know most of you can't pay to come to TechCrunch. Here I, I'm available here at this place that you can get access to. So a lot of great speakers who know that their time minorities and, 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 and command, command a premium for them to go to places. Just remember that most people can't afford that. And therefore, if you can speak somewhere else for free to give people access, try your best to do that. Try your best to do that. So I think it's important for us to um, basically create an ecosystem that you're accessible if you're successful. Yeah, 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 definitely. Mm -hmm. um, guys, thank you so much for the discussion today. Uh, look out in the future or in, in the other um, videos that we'll be creating around this, specifically in the New York City policy areas, resources, other people who are working in this space of sort of building what an ecosystem is. Uh, we'll have conversations with the Economic Development Corporation, uh, not only at the New York City level, but the New York State level and how they support each other, how they connect to each other. Um, specific accelerators and incubators are also going to be guests in the future. Thanks so much, uh, both of you guys, for being here with me today. It's been a pleasure having this initial conversation around the state of entrepreneurship and the New York City perspective on that. Thanks again.
Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you, so Shane. It was nice to chat with you. Also, Glenford. Yeah, bye, Janice. Thanks you so bye, much. Bye, everyone. Bye.